These farmers that we've been talking to about Presion are so curious and so excited. This is maybe one of the coolest things they've seen in their lifetime. I was at a field day in Seymour, Indiana on Friday, and we don't have any short corn out there, very little. So these farmers had never seen it before, but just from the conversations we had, the information they got, one farmer pulled me aside afterwards and said, if you could get me some, I'll plant 500 acres next year. <laughs> Half to a majority of acres are gonna start converting to short stature corn. This is the next evolution, I really believe that. This is Around the Farm, the podcast about all things ag. I'm your host, Clint Schaffer, and today we're going to be talking with Dr. Denise Bouvret, the North American Smart Corn System Strategy and Launch Lead of Bear Crop Science, and we're going to be talking about all things Presion. This is the new revolutionary short stature corn hybrid that has everybody talking about it. Let's jump right into it. Denise, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for, uh, thanks for joining us here today. Hey, Clint. Thank you. Good to be here. Well, how about you give us a little background for the listeners here today? Uh, of course. So I've been with Bear for about 13 years. Uh, most of that time spent in the R&D organization as a scientist by training. Um, I was always involved in uh, developing our products and characterizing our products uh, prior to moving to the commercial organization. Uh, but I've been in the commercial organization for the last three and a half years, and it is my absolute pleasure and privilege uh, to be the launch lead for the Corn North America team, and particularly the Presion Smart Corn System. It's the most fun project I've ever had uh, since being at the company. I, I know there is just a ton of excitement around Presion. I've seen a lot of the teams out there doing field days, and of course, we've had a lot of different meetings talking about uh, talking about these products. How do you look at you know your your journey starting in R and D and and in a science you know as a scientist and then going into the commercial organization and launching it? What's kind of compare and contrast being on both sides of the fence on that? Yeah, well you know it's always fun in R and D as well because you're at the cutting edge right you're seeing the technology and innovation for the first time you're discovering uh, the traits and figuring out how to make them work and how to make them work in the germplasm so that the farmers have all the characteristics they want in that crop um, with the new trait and that it really brings value. So there's a lot of reward. It's very rewarding and fulfilling, right, to be in the in the R&D organization as well. But you're pretty far from the farmer. So, you know, you never really quite know, um, you know, how the technology uh, really comes forward and what that really means to a farmer and how that changes, you know, the way that they operate and, and solves their biggest challenges. So it's kind of what I see as the most fun Thing in this transition is being able to get out and talk to farmers, see the excitement and curiosity in their face. I can tell you this, um, these farmers that we've been talking to about Presion are so curious and so excited. This is maybe one of the coolest things they've seen in their lifetime um, as well. And it's so different and has so many, so much potential and so many opportunities uh, to help them be better um, and be better farmers and, and grow more food. And I, I think that's really, really awesome to be able to see that. So that journey has been, you know, it's fun to, to have that kind of back-end knowledge of, you know, what how things work, you know, you know how things look under the hood and how things work and what's really making things, making, making the traits do what they do. But then to be out and be able to see how that comes to life in the products for real um, is, is really, really fun. So it's, it's been an amazing journey. I highly recommend it for, for my other R&D partners out there. Well, that 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 is awesome, Denise. And I know there, like I said, there's just a ton of excitement around these, uh, around this product, around uh, this this brand. Uh, but before we jump too much further, for those that may not know, tell us a little bit about Presion. So yes. for those that are listening out there, how much shorter is it? Yes. So you can expect the shorter stature corns to be a, about thirty percent shorter than your traditional varieties. So what, wherever your traditional varieties are, based on your environment consider 30% shorter. We're targeting five to seven feet. So seven feet, kind of our max. We, that's about as high as we want it to go so that you still have that all season accessibility uh, with standard ground equipment. So we want to keep that height between five and seven feet and that ear height at 24 inches or higher. So that's our target with this new crop. 
Gotcha. Yeah, I would imagine ear height would be important on that. So is that a, is that part of the breeding process then, and the development process is to to find those right right hybrids that, that have that uh, that ear height then as well. Absolutely. Um, and understanding the ear height, uh, the environmental impact to the ear height as well. So, um, you know, taking all of that data from breeding market development um, to help us place those hybrids on the right field based on their genetics, based on their uh, propensity for ear height modification um, and how much they're impacted by environmental factors. And so we have built um, an ear height prediction model that helps us uh, understand field eligibility and get the right hybrids on the right acre as we bring those forward. How, how did it start and, and, and where are we at today? So I'll, I'll tell you what I love about Presion first and then give you a little bit about the journey. So the two things, the take-home messages always with Presion smart corn system is that it really brings two things to farmers, risk mitigation and increased opportunities. And you get that risk mitigation from the protection aspect of this crop, right? Being able to have that resilience, crop uh, re- resistance to wind, uh, but also um, the, through the access piece. And so you have the the pay, right? We like to say that the smart corn system pays. You get protection, access, yield potential. All of those things taken together reduce a farmer's risk and increase their opportunities to protect, preserve, and drive higher yields on that farm. And that drives profitability. So that's what excites me about Presion smart corn system. I hear, you know, it being called the, the smart corn system. Uh, I've also heard, you know, the early days of this short stature corn or short corn. Yeah. Uh, what, what is this, you know, you talk about some of this risk mitiva- mitigation with wind. Yep. Um, wh- wh- how did this really get developed and, and how do we get to where we yeah. are today? You know, um, I would say this really started about 15 years ago in our breeding organization. Um, and some of our breeders uh, were playing around with some traits um, that uh, bring this shorter phenotype uh, forward. And, and as you know, you think back in history, the semi-dwarf dwarf um, technologies are not new to crops. This has been introduced in wheat. It was transformational, right? The Green Revolution uh, when this came out because it solves a lot of challenges uh, that many crops have. And so there were some of our breeders in Mexico recognized this as an opportunity to solve some of the biggest challenges that their farmers had, particularly in the areas that had a lot of wind from hurricanes. Um, And it was constantly uh, destroying those crops. And so they started breeding with the trait. They started bringing that trait into more modern germplasm and trying to make that work well in the modern germplasm. I'd say it's been a journey. Our breeding native trait that we're working with right now is a naturally occurring mutation. There were others um, that that have had been identified as well that our breeders were working with, but this is the one that really um, took hold in our germplasm, and we developed a very strong forward breeding program with that, and now a trait integration program with that to be able to take that trait, put it in all of our elite germplasm, and create shorter stature hybrids with all the other characteristics that you still know and love in your traditional varieties. Um, and that's really what we want to bring forward for those farmers. So it's been a long journey. There have been a lot of challenges from a breeding and production standpoint to figure out how to make this trait work best in the plants and keep all the other good things that you want uh, whenever you're messing around with genetics and physiology, right? Things can change. Um, so that's been quite the journey. But it's been very intentional from the start for bear. So it, 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 what, what I'm hearing, it's a really long journey for a really short product. There you go. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> my my terrible dad jokes, Denise. Sorry, you know I got to throw a few of them in there. Um, you know, when we talk about short stature corn, I I think this is you know one of the most exciting things you talked about. You know, a lot of just the benefits that come along with that, and then of course rolling that into the smart corn system with Presion. Uh, I think there there's just a ton of opportunity there. And and as far as for you know looking at these different hybrids, I know a, a lot of times you know when we're selling corn all over the place. Uh, we have different hybrids that, that work well in different soil types and different environments. Is Presion similar to that, Denise? Like, I mean, are there going to be yes. some specific hybrids for some specific areas and environments? Yes. I think it'll be very much like what you're used to with the traditional um, tall varieties and that you'll have a range of, of hybrids and um, each of them will have a better fit, right, in different environments that will all still hold true. 
Um, I think there are a lot of things about short stature corn that are very similar um, to tall corn. It's still corn. Um, it, everything you know about growing corn is still true, um, but there's some nuances, right, and some some uh, flexibility in how how what uh, what you can put on that corn when and with what equipment. Um, and uh, it gives it opens up a lot of new possibilities to really optimize um, the management of this crop. And you get that risk reduction from the resistance to the wind. And so you're, you know, if you think about every year, farmers do a lot of research and get a lot of advice on what hybrid should I plant. It's all about that hybrid, right? The yield potential of that hybrid is one of the most important decisions they make. And that yield potential is the highest it ever is once they put that that corn seed in the ground. And then everything that happens that year is something that can start robbing a little bit of that yield away. And uh, I see the Prescient Smart Corn System as a great product concept to help that farmer mitigate and minimize those yield robbers, robbers, right? And really protect and preserve that yield potential of that plant throughout the season. What have you seen, Denise, as far as for the standability of Presion versus standard uh, standard corn hybrids? Yeah, it's unparalleled. Uh, you know, we've been working with this uh, trait for quite some time. So we've had a lot of trials out in breeding for years, a lot of trials in market development. We've got our groundbreaker trials out this year uh, with almost 300 farmers on 30,000 acres. And every year, right, um, there are opportunities to see uh, the the and the testament of the standability of this crop. Um, now, not that we ever want to see those storms for our farmers, because down corn is terrible, and it is not something we want our farmers to have to deal with. But we see it every year. Now, this is something that may not happen every year on every field, right? And it may or may not be as devastating as that derecho storm that you mentioned in Iowa um, a few years ago. But it certainly is a yield robber every single year, and um, and we've got. Um, I would say every every year we have un- countless images and, and opportunistic observations of when this corn has stood uh, through those storms. Uh, now it's not derecho proof or hurricane proof when uh, when your bins are crushed and the tractors are flying and trees are uprooted. Your short corn will also um, be lying on the ground, but it is significantly improved and more resistant to both lodging and green snap con- compared to your tall varieties. And, and that's a very consistent phenotype that we see with this crop. And it's it's certainly probably the biggest reason um, our farmers are, are interested in this, along with the access. But this is a big draw for them. Yeah, I, I, I know, again, I, I'd, I'd go back to my, my you know, test data of one. I know my, my dad has talked about being so excited about having something that, you know, just protect of that of that risk, right? The protect of that 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 wind issue, I think, would be just a big stress reliever, right? To uh, knowing One less that, thing uh, to worry about. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And uh, and when you have that big storm rolling in in the middle of the night, uh, maybe you can sleep a little easier, right? Uh, knowing that uh, that your corn can stand a little better. Um, right. You also talk about Denise. You talked about the access, and and I think uh, I, I know for me this is another like huge exciting aspect because I think this opens up a ton of opportunity. But uh, what are you hearing so far from farmers? What are they excited about the access? Yeah, so there's two main areas they're really thinking about as they look at the access, and the first is around fertility. So um, at a minimum. The, the short stature corn is, um, I don't know if you know this, but when you first plant short stature corn and as it first starts emerging and is growing, it doesn't look any different um, than your tall varieties until about V8, V10. Uh, that's really when you start to see the, the differentiation in height as the tall varieties start to elongate their stalks. So before, prior to that time, they look exactly the same. Um, but what we do notice is that uh, farmers have about a seven to 10 day extended window to be able to side dress with a toolbar. Um, so something most farmers have on their farm, easy to get out there, add a little nitrogen if if the crop needs it, if you wanted to try a split application um, and you have a little bit more time extended window to get that done with the short stature corn. So farmers are excited about that. For farmers that have wide drops or other ways to get that fertility in even later than that, um, they're excited about trying that and being able to manage their fertility a little bit differently. 
Um, I will tell you that the short stature corn uses nitrogen very similar to, to how the tall varieties do. So there's really no difference in nitrogen use efficiency. It still needs the nitrogen at the same time to be able to grow. Um, but you do have a little bit more flexibility uh, rather than just always 100% fall applied. So there's a lot of room to optimize that that could potentially, um, you know, through really good optimization, potentially reduce that farmer's costs um, for fertility. So there's interest there for sure. And then the biggest interest is around late season fungicide applications using ground equipment. So there's a lot of challenges getting fungicide on uh, using aerial applications, just availability and scheduling and timing. Um, growers get concerned about coverage. Um, so there's a, a, a lot of excitement around farmers with farmers thinking about being able to drive that app, that uh, ground rig over themselves um, or through a cooperator and get that fungicide on at the best time to really control the disease and drive plant health um, and, and potentially with better coverage um, as well. It also opens up acres where farmers just aren't able to apply. So if they're near an urban area or near windmills or other areas that you just can't do aerial applications, this opens up acres that currently cannot be applied um, with fungicides. So that's certainly an opportunity that farmers are excited about. I just saw a video posted on our Facebook page from one of our groundbreaker growers. And uh, his son was driving the sprayer through the field, through tasseled corn, spraying fungicide. And the guy says, I'm a 68 year old farmer and I have never seen um, dr anybody drive through tasseled corn, spraying fungicide. And at the end, there's just this little giggle um, from him. It's just, I think they're kind of giddy. Uh, the farmers I've talked to and our groundbreaker farmers, especially because they're really getting a good look, right? A whole field look at this crop. And they're, they're kind of giddy about all the things that they could do differently. Well, you know, th there's, there's a, a whole bunch of things that I think this opens up. I even think about, you know, when you're, when you're running, you know, different trials or you're wanting to leave different strips, I think it's a lot easier to do that with a ground rig, right? Uh, as opposed to, to aerial application, uh, and the other piece of that, you know, you talked about fertility. And one of the things that I'd be interested in, uh, you know, knowing a little bit more would be like we have a, a wet farm, right? Just it's it's inherently wet. It's close to the Mississippi River. Um, and a lot of times you got to that limits what you can do from a nitrogen standpoint. You got to kind of preload some things because you may not be able to get back into that field based on right. on how wet it is. Yeah. And I feel like being able to go out there with a ground rig, I think, opens up some some of that later fertility opportunities. So let's say if you were planning on side dressing, but you weren't be you know you weren't able to get out there. Now all of a sudden it is easier to get out there with you know maybe you're going to spread urea, maybe you're going to have bring somebody in with some Y drops, uh, and I think it just opens up a lot more fertility opportunities and kind of limits that risk uh, depending on what your for you know fertility plan is. Yeah, well, and I think we we don't want to underestimate leveraging health imagery right, throughout the season to even be able to understand um, where the issue, potential, you know, problem areas are and to be able to really prescriptively, right, um, make those management decisions throughout the season. So leveraging uh, the health imagery, leveraging uh, pins in field view to be able to identify areas that need to, you know, further scouting, but then being able to take action on what you've scouted, right? That's the piece that I love because you can get those insights, you know, from your climate field view data and information and imagery, satellite imagery. But then with short stature corn, most of the time, you're going to have a more of an opportunity to take action and try to do something about what you see. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, as far as for Let's talk a little bit about the management practices that goes goes in with uh, with Presion and the and the Smart Corn system. Is this you know the the same kind of population, same planter spacing? You know, I, I've heard high populations and twenty inch rows yeah. are optimal, right? But uh, what what about the folks that still have you know we we have a thirty inch planter, right? And yeah. uh, and and we're planting probably thirty four thirty five thousand plants per acre. Um, yeah. wh wh where's, where's Pressy on land in that? Yeah. So our goal is to not have barriers to adoption. So we want farmers to be able to adopt this technology into their current practices. So for, for that reason, we test everything in breeding under standard conditions. So 30 inch rows, 
standard populations for the environment, um, and really look for hybrids that are short stature corn hybrids that are yielding at parity to what you see in your tall pipeline. Um, because if it yields at standard practices, then everything you get out of that crop from the system is upside. And that's our goal. Um, but then we want to optimize the system and deliver that to the farmer with recommendations. So, you know, at, at standard practices, you're going to get similar yields to what you get right now. But um, what we know about this product and your field and your yield environment and these genetics based on the yield density response data we have, here's what we would recommend from a management perspective to get more, right, out of this crop on that field. So that's the, the premise of the smart corn system and really what we're doing. Um, I will tell you the hybrids we have right now lean towards higher populations because that's what they were selected for. So the genetics we have right now tend to be um, happier at higher populations and perform better at higher populations. So for example, um, our groundbreaker growers, we have almost 300 farmers and 32,000 acres and groundbreakers. Across those farmers, their average historical seeding rate in climate field blue was about 34,000, so similar to your farm, Clint. And our average recommendation for those farmers with the three hybrids we have right now was 40,000 seeds per acre, so a little higher than what they're currently planting. I'll tell you about 80% of the farmers that participated followed that recommendation and gave it a try. So I think that's a pretty good testament to the great relationships that our team have and the trust that our farmers have in our teams to, to try that out. You know, Denise, you, you mentioned another great piece that I wanted to bring up too, which was uh, around the relationship between Presion and FieldView. Uh, yes. I, I would imagine as you're as you're rolling into a system like this, and and especially like when I think about it from a groundbreakers, which hey, we're still we're still learning, right? A lot about these products and 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 the whole system. Uh, how important is it for for farmers to be, you know, not only uh, collecting data? you know, today, but also kind of preparing, you know, for, for maybe some of these solutions uh, out in the future? Oh, it's critical. It's, it's absolutely critical. So field view is going to be integral to delivering the system. And, and that data is really what informs, right? We have a lot of data that we capture when we test and characterize these products or at our breeding and market development pipeline. Um, so that data feeds those initial models, right? But as we start to deliver this to farmers, having the historical data from their field um, is critical, right, to really understanding, okay, here's everything we know about the products. Here's everything we now know about your field. And then that farmer knowledge, too, and the dealer knowledge about the spots in the field, right, that you just know what's going to do what where. Um, and you bring all that together, that's what really drives much more personalized and tailored uh, and truly hones in on those recommendations to make them the most value add for that farmer. Um, so it will be absolutely critical to be on Climate Field View, um, to have that plus subscription so you can receive those optimal seeding rate recommendations, and then work, you know share the data back uh, right after the season to say, okay, we I tried your recommendation. Here's what happened. We're like, okay, well, it was pretty close, but not quite, right? So let's tweak it. Here's what we learned. Now we can see the yield analysis on that field, understand um, what tweaks we need to make to really make it even more optimal uh, for that farmer next time around. And and one of the one of the other pieces that I wanted to to, to talk about too, Denise, would be the the future of Presion. And and I think you hinted to hinted about this a little bit early on, but if if I'm if I'm recalling right today, we're dealing with with hybrids that have been bred for to, for being short, and in the future, yes. we'll have traded products that will be short. What's what's kind of the difference between that when we hear that kind of different conversation? Where's the where's the future of Presion going to take us? Yeah, so we're already transitioning towards that as well. So we've we've been forward breeding, right? And what that really means is. You identify this trait, you have it in some of the lines, you use those lines as parents and you cross them with lots of lines to get more genetic diversity. But there's this inherent, um, you know, um, parentage, right, uh, with, with that trait as you go forward. Um, and then, as you know, we have an ex we have an, an extensive trade integration program, which really allows us to open up 
all of our germplasm to all of our traits. We do this with our double pro traits, right? Our tricepta traits, our smart sex pro traits. So now we're treating the short corn trait very much like that, uh, where we're, we've isolated that trait. And now we're putting it into all of our elite germplasm that we've spent years developing and making it short and then characterizing and finding the best performing short hybrids um, as well. That allows us to speed up, right? That speeds up breeding, breed, the breeding process and allows you to open up more germplasm and more, more um, maturities, right? You can, you can expand much further than a forward bred program, right? Um, and then you add in the biotech trait, which is that next version um, of that trait. And that's a dominant trait. So our breeding trait, right, is recessive. So you have to put that on both the males and the females to create a, a short hybrid. Now that biotech trait is going to bring a dominant um, her- inheritance pattern. So that's going to allow us to just put that on the females. That opens up even more germplasm because you can you can pair that with many, many, many more males um, to be able to really expand. So that's, that's going to, you know, in, um, it be indicative of our growth, right? And our scalability uh, with Presion as we move forward. So we're kind of small right now, very targeted and, and uh, taking a targeted approach, test and learn, really figure out all the potential and the things that this system can do, get feedback from our farmers and from our dealers on how to implement this system uh, to, to make it, you know, what we think it can be. Uh, for everyone. And then as we continue to progress through this, we're going to expand in acreage. We're going to expand um, in our footprint in the market. And when we get to that biotech trade at the end of the decade, we expect to be on a very large number of acres. By that point in time, we're, we're assuming by the end of the decade, 2030, 2032, we're assuming between 40 and 50% of our volume could be short stature corn. That's half our pipeline. <laughs> That's exactly what I was going to ask next, Denise, was was looking out in the future, do you see that a majority of corn is going to be a lot shorter than what it is today? Yeah, I think it will be. And, you know, I think it'll be, it'll be really telling over the next few years, right, what that adoption looks like. But in conversations we have with farmers right now, based on what they've seen so far, they are telling us they would, they would convert about a third to a half of their farm to short stature corn once it's available. Um, I was at a field day in Seymour, Indiana on Friday, and we don't have any short corn out there, very little. So these farmers had never seen it before, but just from the conversations we had, the information they got, one farmer pulled me aside afterwards and said, if you could get me some, I'll plant 500 acres next year. (laughs) (laughs) So, you know, I think the adoption's going to be quick. Um, I think our demand will outpace our volume and our, our supply for a few years. Um, but then, you know, mid to late decade, we're going to catch up and, uh, and really be able to meet that demand. So, yeah, I do think, um, you know, half to a majority of acres are going to start converting to short stature corn. This is the next evolution. I really believe that. Like, this uh, is that next big step change in, in ag for corn. That's exactly where my mind goes, Denise. Is is this is this is that next exciting thing that, uh, that that's coming down the pipe, right? I mean, we've seen it, we've seen it multiple times. Whether it's you know corn rootworm getting mixed in, or whether it's Roundup Ready beans, like all sorts of these different huge, huge trait launches. And uh, I look at Presion, That's that's it, right? I mean, that's that's going to be so exciting when we see that uh, see that coming out uh, full commercial. Exactly. Yep. And exactly. And as we mature our pipeline and have more genetic diversity, we'll be able to, you know, adapt to, to all of those different types of acres, right? Uh, to really be able to get this out there. Well, Denise, I know that uh, you've done a spectacular job driving uh, this uh, this excitement, you know, all all through our organization with our farmers uh, and and launching this product out. I know every time that I hear Presion or the Smart Corn System, I think of woohoo, right? Uh, you That's know, right. I, I I keep going back to that, and uh, every <laughs> meeting, you know, I think I heard you somewhere in the crowd yelling woohoo every time that it uh, it was mentioned, and uh, so uh, great job at. Uh, at launching this and, uh, and like I said, driving the excitement through the organization. That's right. Well, this is easy to be excited about, right? And you just can't, when you're this passionate about something, you can't contain it. So you, you have to let it out in a woohoo for <laughs> sure. And, and I, you know, I can't take all the credit, Clint, you know, it takes an army, right. To bring these innovations forward, 
um, to, to all of our farmers. And so there's a huge launch team behind this effort and lots and lots of people, I would say somebody, almost every organization has touched this um, as we go forward. So kudos to the whole team and organization and all the folks on the ground who are actually making it real. Well, if, if a farmer is interested to learn more about Presion, where do they go? So they can go to um, uh, PressionSmartcornSystem.com to learn more at Bear Traits. Uh, but then the best place is to go to your Bear Rep, um, chat with them, learn a little bit more, find out if you can get involved in any of our pilot field trials um, to be able to get your hands on some uh, or maybe do some uh, trials with our TAs as well. Excellent. Excellent. Well, now we're going to roll into one of my favorite uh, parts of the uh, of the podcast that I like to call This or That. So this is just going to be a few questions that you just pick one and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see where it goes. So uh, I'm going to start out with one that I ask everybody, which, you know, in agriculture, there's this big, uh, big debate on whether it's called an auger wagon or a grain cart. So Denise, where are you sitting on the auger wagon versus grain cart conversation? I say grain cart. What part okay. of the country am I aligned with? <laughs> oh, like 90% of it. Just not me. You know, that's I'm like out here on my own little island here. So I'm an auger wagon guy. I don't know where this came from, but that's, that's where I sit. So, you know. All right. How about uh, mountain or beach? Ooh, that's a tough one because I love them both, but I'm going to say mountain. Nice, nice. How about tea or coffee? Coffee. Oh, 100%. Black. Uh, what about Mac or PC? Oh, PC, for sure. All right. And my last one, tall or short corn? Short. <laughs> short. Good thing I'd have to throw that packages. one in there. It's good to be short. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Denise, thank you so much for uh, for taking time out of your busy schedule here to jump on the on the podcast with us and and talk to us about this exciting product, the Presion Smart Corn System. So, thanks a ton for joining us here today. Thank you so much, Clint. My pleasure. Hey, a big thanks to Denise for joining us here on Around the Farm, and thanks to you, the listener. And if you like this podcast, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and maybe share it with a friend or two as well. And as always, Around the Farm is brought to you by Climate Field View and can be found wherever you listen to your podcast at. And until next time, we'll see you around the farm. <laughs>